Hello everyone. Uh, so this UFO video was, came up during the LA fires a couple of days ago and it shows like there's a little white dot moving along here which isn't actually the UFO people are interested in. It's this one over here. Let me zip back a little bit here. You see something kind of like like a long dark object kind of comes in and zips across the scene. Now we can see this video isn't very good quality. It's, you know, we can't even make out any detail in these houses uh, or very, very much in the background either. Uh, so, you know, the immediate thought here was that this was just like some kind of plane or maybe a helicopter moving along underneath this this news helicopter. This is live footage um, from a news helicopter. And this white thing here, didn't know what that was initially, maybe another plane, it'd have to be a small one or maybe like a balloon or something. But this this was actually solved yesterday and it was solved by Flarky, who's uh, you know great at solving this type of thing figured out exactly what was going on, where the helicopter was, uh, the news helicopter, and what this was. This is actually a plane, and this uh, this down here is actually another plane. Um, how did he do that? Well, I thought it might be a good idea for me to kind of go through the process of how you know, he and I do these, these type of things, and uh, it's kind of a multi-step purpose. Now, the first thing with any UFO case like this that you want to get is the date, the time, and the location, and with this news video, we, we have that. It's uh, We say it's in the West Hills neighborhood in the L.A. area. we got all these street names here. Crummer Canyon Road. Uh, and we've got the, the time here, 4.55 p.m. Central Time. And we know this is in L.A., so this will be Pacific Time, which is two hours earlier. So that would be 2.55 uh, p.m. Uh, Pacific Time. Uh, so, you know, the first thing to do is kind of like figure out exactly where we are. We, we've got these roads. So let's just look them up. We can, uh, let's load up a web browser. All right, so here's Crema Canyon Road. And we can see the uh, the various houses and things that are there. And from this, we can figure out, you know, what they're actually looking at. So I'm going to zoom this in a little bit here. So these houses over here, Country Oak Road, etc., is... Yeah, these houses here, Country Oak Road, right there. Okay, so we know what we're looking at. So this this kind of tells us, you know, what direction we're looking at. We're looking in this direction, and so we're kind of uh, looking towards the uh, northwest from approximately the 101. So the helicopter somewhere around, you kind know, of where I put this this camera right here. So, um, so you know, so with the Hidden Hills area, so. Yeah, I found this this useful AI tool the other day, and if you just simply type in the uh, the location, date, and time, it will provide you a very useful link to ADSB Exchange. So I'm going to go to uh, January the 9th, uh, 2020, oops, 2025, and uh, 2:55 p.m. Uh, and in Hidden Hills, CA. Okie dokie, so it uh, converts it to Zulu, Zulu time, which is UTC time, and gives me a link, view aircraft movements, click on that, it's going to open ADSB exchange. Uh, we know roughly what we're, we're looking at, the West Hills area here, and we're looking in this direction towards the northwest. I'm going to move back a minute, make sure I don't miss anything. Uh, now, you're going to find the helicopter first, there's a couple of helicopters here, this one has an FD at the end, which means it's the fire department. This one has a TV at the end, which means it's a TV helicopter. So this is going to be the one here. Uh, there's three planes kind of roughly in the direction that we're looking in. So these are pretty likely to be, you know, one of these planes is likely to be the, the one that uh, we saw. They're all kind of circling around. Um, if I click on each one, we can get the information about them. Uh, see, the news helicopter is at 7,450 feet, so it's pretty high up. Looking down, this plane here is at 4,700, this plane's at 5,800, this plane here is at 2,600. So all these three planes are below the helicopter, so you will be able to see all three of these planes looking in this direction. Uh, I'm going to toggle, toggle the multi-track select, and I can click on each of those three planes, da, 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 and the news helicopters selected there as well. So I've got three planes selected. Now I'm going to let it play for a minute and we'll see this plane here kind of goes in front of the news helicopter quite close to it. 
which gives makes it a big candidate. So we'll see that one is the 108 SA. Uh, and then the other planes, but perhaps the little white dots in the background. Uh, so let's, let's see, that's probably enough because it's already gone past it. So I'm going to export the KML. Go down here, click on geometric altitude. Doesn't really matter which one you use. I usually use geometric altitude. Um, it does matter in some cases, but in this case, it doesn't really matter. All right, so this has downloaded it. So now, if I just shrink my window a little bit and just drag in that from my download folder into here. This is the KML file file I just downloaded. I could load it into Google Earth, but what I'm going to do is load it into SITREC. Now, SITREC is my uh, software that I wrote, Situation Recreation Software, and it's something that uh, I and Flocky and others use to recreate these situations. What you can do is you can take your, your video and you can drop the video into it. And then you can take things like uh, KML tracks, which you've got from uh, um, wherever, and you can set up a situation using those KML tracks. Now let's show you the process here. So what it's done here is it has taken the first one as being the camera and it's taken like 108. We want the TV one to be the camera. So I'd to go to camera and change camera track to be the TV. And then I'm going to change the uh, camera heading to be use angles so I can just point the camera wherever I want. Now, uh, I've only got a little bit of the map here, so I'm going to extend that out a bit by changing the uh, number of tiles. Let's reduce the zoom level a little bit so we should get more details. All right, so now we can see the background over there. And we know we were looking in this direction, so I go over here. And so this is one of the the planes over there. So now we're looking in this direction. So this is showing this this track here, N413 something something. And if I back up a little bit, uh, the other one comes in. So this is probably the bigger plane that comes in from over here. And this will be the uh, little white dot in the background. Now, the times here... 2254, let's see, 1454 PST. Let me just change the time zone to central so it matches what we see. Central standard time matches what we see on the TV here, 455. So here we are, 1654 and a bit. Now we need to adjust these so that looking from the helicopter things match up. Let's see, so if I can zoom in here, we see these streets here kind of match what we're seeing here. Let me see if I can increase the resolution a little bit. Uh, zoom in a little bit more. Yeah, one more. Okay, so that should be enough. Okay, that's good. So now we see we're looking at the same things. And this is the plane that comes in. So what I'm going to do is adjust it so this uh, more distant object uses big spears for the default. We'll change them to planes in a minute. Lines up with this. Now we see these these uh, valleys here, there's ravines, these little ravines that they have here. Uh, right now it's over this one and this is not in the right position. So what I've got to do is bring up my time dialog. Now this is a little confusing, but uh, uh, it's, it actually gets quite easy once you're used to it. All right, so now I've moved this, move the time. This is the adjusting the start time of the simulation uh, to be matched with the video. And so it's over here. So now if I move forward, we should see that object move across, which it does, the same as this one. And then we should see this one come in at the same rate as this plane in the background, which it does. And uh, we see they kind of like, you know, they overlap at the same position. So this one here is, let's see, what is that? This is the N, I can't even read that. Um, it's going to be the 108 SA. And that's a big sphere at the moment. We can make it into a smaller sphere, but what we can also do is change it to the type of plane that it actually is, which is a Rockwell ACE 690. So I've done that, and uh, you will probably see that it's right there. Difficult to make out exactly, but you can make it bigger and you can see it coming in. Now this plane, yeah, it, and when you see it in the video, you can't really see the wings. I think that's just mostly because it's motion blurred and a bit of the video compression. Uh, but it's also because of the color scheme of the plane. Uh, it has this kind of blue under uh, underneath and white on top. 
Uh, the other plane down here, yeah, still showing it was a big, uh, big white blob. Let's make that into a smaller thing. I don't actually, it is actually a small plane. It's a very small fire platting plane. I don't really have something that's small enough to match that. I could make it, I could use this flying saucer model. That's, oops, I didn't want to do that. That's that one. Uh, so I want to change the other one. Is that this one here? Let me just change the color. Okay, so that's that one. And I'm just going to make that into a smaller sphere like this. Leave it as white there. So I've just made it into a, whatever, like a four meter sphere. It's because I don't really have a, a model plane that actually works very well with this particular case. Uh, so now, go back to my full simulation. Here's the situation from above. There's the helicopter here. There's this one plane coming in here. There's this other plane going across here. And we've synced it up with the video so that they both match. Uh, there is this plane here going over this particular ravine and if we press, press play from the start we'll see that the movement of this one matches exactly with this dot and this is just you know the, the data that I just downloaded from ADSB Exchange I didn't do any programming or anything to make these paths it's just following the data so I'm just going to press play watch this dot here moves the same as this one and then when this one comes in here in a second there it is it's exactly the same down here because they zoom in with their camera a little bit, which kind of changes things a bit. But we can see that they're in the exact same position. And in fact, what you can do is look to see where their one is above the other. Let's see, or where one, let's see, this one here is above the end of these streets right here, uh, about there. And you can kind of zoom in and see there he is, he's above those streets. And this one here is right on that little bit of greenery right there. So there we go. Um, this basically proves that it's these two planes, N413DF and N108SA, viewed from this particular helicopter. Because when you look at them from this helicopter's point of view, they look exactly like they do uh, in the video. Uh, I hope this is useful. So this is Medibunk.org's uh, SITREC simulation, which anyone can use. It's free. You can just go and log on. You need to... Register with Metabunk if you want to save things. I can actually save this one now. Um, okay, let's see. Two planes by the fire. Uh, and it'll give you a hyperlink which you can then then uh, share with people. Because uh, if I reload that now, it should recreate the, that situation from that position. And then you can press play and show all your friends. Or you can record the screen, which is what I often do. Uh, and uh, yeah, so you need to log into Metabunk to actually use it. And uh, that's about it. So just kind of recapping, you know, get the date, time, and location, using the uh, ADSB helper chatbot to get a link to ADSB Exchange, used ADSB Exchange to kind of find the uh, uh, the likely planes. We got this TV plane, we, got, we know which direction they're looking at from looking at the map. Downloaded all four by clicking on the multi-track select and then going here to, to download them. Simply dragging that into SITREC, uh, setting the camera to the uh, TV plane and setting this camera headings to use angles and then moving that around so that it matched it. Uh, I probably should have zoomed in a little bit more to match it perfectly. Uh, and, uh, and then just adjusting the time so that things actually were in the correct position uh, so, you know, right there, it's by, by that road, so I need to line it up like that, so, and that's it. So, give it a go. Let me know if you've got any suggestions for improvements. You know, the user interface is a little clunky, uh, but uh, it's a fairly powerful piece of, uh, piece of software, and uh, hopefully it can be used to separate the wheat from the chaff, and if there is anything anomalous out there, then it should bubble to the surface, because we'll be able to eliminate all the things that are not actually anomalous. Uh, so, keep on looking.